Hello everyone. Welcome to the Aspire Technology Partners and Cisco Umbrella Hands-On Course. Thank you for joining us today. We have a great session prepared for you. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Everyone in attendance is muted so we can fully maximize the insights from the presentation. This webinar is being recorded. All attendees will receive a link to the recording in a follow-up email. The recording will also be available to watch on our website, aspiretransforms.com. Before we begin, allow us to introduce Aspire Technology Partners. Aspire has headquarters in Eatontown, New Jersey. We have local operations in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, as well as White Plains and Albany in the state of New York. We work with our customers for business transformation by leveraging the power of digital to achieve their defined outcomes. We act as an extension of IT teams through our managed services and provide innovative and actionable industry perspectives for our client partners. Aspire's core strength is anchored in our dedicated team of experts, delivering advanced technology solutions and services that revolve around our core practice areas, enterprise networking, collaboration, cybersecurity, data center and cloud, mobility, and IoT. Today's Aspire subject matter expert is Mike O'Connell. Michael is a security solutions architect at Aspire Technology Partners and is certified by multiple vendors. He has a large-scale expertise on Cisco network security deployments in Firepower, ISE, AMP, Umbrella, and StealthWatch. Please welcome Mike. Good afternoon and welcome to the Cisco Umbrella Hands-On Course. My name is Michael O'Connell and I'm a security solutions architect here at Aspire Technology Partners. Today we're going to be talking about our agenda with our digital transformation, the third era of enterprise IT, some Cisco umbrella background, some Cisco umbrella licensing. What some of the new licensing features in 2020 and 2021 have offered with SIG Essentials, with DNS Essentials and SIG Advantage. We're also gonna go into a Cisco umbrella demo. Now this isn't just an out of box default demo. What I'm actually gonna show you is some new network features in 2020 and 2021 with SIG, with some CASB for cloud access secure broker solutions in Cisco Umbrella's new technology. And at the end, we're gonna transition to any questions and upcoming features that you're looking forward to. So a little bit about Aspire. Uh, what does Aspire bring before we get started? Aspire brings the, the expertise and experience to shape and certainly dig, transform your digital infrastructure. We have over a dozen years serving enterprises with complex challenges certifications in all major infrastructure technologies and understanding how to meet your business objectives with technology solutions, deep experience in the industries, a full suite of managed services and a record of exceptional service and support. So let's talk about Cisco Umbrella now. Let's go into some, a little bit of background. So Cisco Umbrella was originally created by a company known as open dns if you have any experience with cisco umbrella for example what you'll see is some of the installation files and, and things we're going to go into in the demo actually still refer to the original open dns names it's kind of a funny inside joke about cisco umbrella coming from open dns some of the the old paths are still there cisco acquired this technology to be a primary security focused product in ransomware and malware defense in 2020 and 2021, Cisco's introduced, and what we're gonna go through some advanced features in the demo today, is Secure Internet Gateway. So what is Secure Internet Gateway? Secure Internet Gateway is your secure on-ramp to the internet. So with COVID and the way the world's changed, the virtual offices, not sure how your organization's handling the transition back to full-time offices, is that mandatory? Is there gonna be a hybrid workplace? With Secure Internet Gateway, you can manage and maintain your corporate devices and the resources they, they access on the internet 24-7, 365, no matter where they're at. If they're at home, if they're working from a branch office, just like you used to maintain things in your corporate infrastructure or your data center, Cisco Umbrella SIG gives you that protection level to see what's going on in the corporate level protection. So some statistics about Cisco Umbrella. Number one thing is cybersecurity teams and tools are far falling behind, rising risky cyber threats. You see it every day on the news. You know, you have coastal pipelines, ransomware, constant attacks, phishing schemes where a user clicks on an email thinking it's from a corporate, you know, C-level executive or another employee. Really, it's, it's a malicious tool. So Umbrella gives us the data to be able to protect, more importantly, not only your corporate users, but your branch offices and your remote users. As I mentioned before, world's changed. 
COVID, how's the hybrid workplace happen? With people being remote, maybe they're in the office three days a week, five days a week. Um, you know, there's blind spots in your organization. Do the demo today help shape, able to give you an integration and introduction into how Aspire and Cisco Umbrella and SIG can help secure the blind spots in your organization? So in order to start, let's go through um, the licensing model in Cisco's Umbrella Solution products. So um, this, the new licensing model is the baseline is DNS security essentials. What do you get with a DNS security essentials model? Well, you get to protect your users from a corporate network uh, and with all network integrated devices, DNS level. What is DNS? Anything you look up at the internet is going to be provided via DNS. So at a DNS security essentials level, that's essentially what it's doing. It's protecting and managing and protecting your corporate DNS lookups. From there, with the umbrella licensing platform, we go kind of like a, a, an add-on infrastructure. The next level up is in the middle here. It's called DNS Security Advantage. Everything you get on the left-hand panel of DNS Security Essentials, you're going to get in DNS Security Advantage. Biggest difference here is you're going to get the ability to block direct to IP connections that bypass DNS. So if you have a malicious attack, someone is going after your corporate infrastructures and they're going directly to IP, you DNS Security Advantage is where you want to be to protect that bypass of dns selective proxies are already also introduced in here so any proxy risky domains for url file inspection it's going to add cisco amp aka secure endpoint using selective proxy to go ahead and modify and make sure risky domains are not being accessed in your infrastructure we can also add um, decryption and inspection of ssl traffic associated with risky domains here at the dns security advantage one thing that we're going to go ahead and go right to the far right now is we'll go to the Secure Internet Gateway SIG Essentials. So what do you get with SIG Essentials? Well, this is where, where the game changed in 2020 and 2021. What you get is you get Secure Web Gateway. You can proxy all of your web traffic for URL, file inspections, using any malicious malware scans for utilizing Talos in the back end of Cisco AMP, aka Secure Endpoint. You can do all your decryption and inspections of all your HTTPS traffic. You can do web filtering. So with Secure Internet Gateway Essentials, I can go ahead and web filter by domain, URL, categorization. I get Cisco Threat Grid Cloud Sandbox environments to analyze suspicious files. Say I may have a malicious file on a remote workstation. I don't have access to that workstation. I can go ahead and inspect that in a Threat Grid Cloud Sandbox at SIG Essentials without being affecting anything else in my infrastructure. Next, you get your cloud deliver firewall. What does this give you? Well, that gives you what is kind of known as a hybrid firewall. Gone is the day where I need to put a firewall at every location. If I have someone that's remote, someone at a small branch office, for example, I can go ahead and I can run Cisco Umbrella SIG Essentials and go ahead and place layer three, layer four policies to block IPs, ports, protocols. I can even get higher when we start talking about the advantage section next about application layer blocking all the way to layer seven. What else can we get with this? Cloud access security broker, or I'll say later in the demo, CASB. I can create policies with granular controls. I can block uploads. Maybe you have users working from home now and they're not sitting behind the corporate GPO. Well, with SIG Essentials, I can stop my company from uploading corporate assets to Dropbox or Box.com any public facing site. So Secure Internet Gateway Essentials and Advantage is going to give you advanced feature sets that is brand new in 2020 and 2021 moving forward. The next thing that I just wanna highlight over here is the granularity of feature sets uh, that you'll get with the SIG Secure Internet Gateway Essentials over um, the standard DNS Security Essentials, DNS Security Advantage. Now, somebody asked me the other day, hey, listen, Mike, I, um, I actually have Umbrella. I have Insights. It's the package that I have. That is the old licensing model. That would compare directly to your DNS security essentials right now. That's kind of the one-for-one -one comparison. And there's a good amount of information um, that marketing at Aspire can provide you on a license comparison. But however, if you're looking at your Umbrella and say, hey, listen, I have Umbrella, but I I'm here to learn about SIG, SIG Essentials, SIG Advantage. Well, we can go ahead and we can migrate and add directly onto your existing umbrella. 
Whether you're brand new or you want to add SIG features, you need the protection of your remote users. There's flexibility with the Cisco and Aspire to add these feature sets. So what are we going to look through today real quick in this demo? We're going to go through what we just went through with the umbrella platform. I'm actually going to show you the dashboard and what the architecture looks like. If you've used Cisco umbrella, this dashboard will look familiar to you. However, you'll notice there's a little bit of differences. The console interface and navigation is a little different. Uh, networking, secure internet gateway, SIG, things I keep remind, uh, mentioning here, that's added. Cloud deliver firewall services is also added. Secure web firewall. And finally, we're going to show you how to integrate a Cisco SecureX integration with Cisco Umbrella, live in a demo with an API key. Now, if you've never seen Cisco Umbrella before, I was talking a little bit before about the levels of protection it can give you. So at a baseline, when it was acquired from Open DNS, Cisco rebranded this dashboard. What's very nice about the umbrella is everything flows from left to right and with the drop-down categorization. So you'll see qu quickly here, if I go ahead and I look at my menu bar on the left-hand side, you'll have your overview, which will show all of my network breakdowns. So all my network traffic, any kind of requests, total blocks, all security events. If I wanted to pivot over, for example, and look at DNS, I can just quickly do it right here on the right-hand side. You'll see how many like active roaming clients I have. So in this demo, we have one out of one active roaming. What is a roaming client? That can be somebody remote, somebody working from Starbucks, somebody traveling for your organization. Pivoting back over here, I can then pivot back over to my proxies. So if I'm doing SIG feature sets, if I'm doing any kind of Cisco Umbrella proxying with SIG Essentials, for example, I can go ahead and pull directly into this proxy dashboard and dive down into my blocks. As I continue to scroll down, you'll see there's some ad advanced feature sets that you may not have in your Cisco Umbrella Insights or your DNS Essentials license. I mentioned earlier about SIG Essentials and SIG's introduction into a firewall. So do not fear if you do not have this. This is part of the demo and why I'm showing you this. You'll also see that I have sessions for how many total firewall sessions I have here in the last 30 days. I have how many blocks, so I'm interactively doing firewall blocking. I have IPS breakdowns. Now, I, I'm not doing any IPS in this demo, but if I wanted to do IDS IPS breakdown events, I can also do that. So I mentioned earlier in the slide deck that during the presentation that this can replace a legacy you know, branch office firewall. This can absolutely be validated to go ahead and, and use an edge appliance to talk directly to your Cisco umbrella infrastructure to protect remote offices and branch locations. You'll see I also have security categories and I can go ahead and drive drill down very easily into malware events, any kind of phishing events, any CNC, also known as command and control events, any kind of crypto mining events. Luckily, I don't have much of any of this in the demo, but in, in your infrastructure, you'd be able to protect all of that. As I continue to grow down into the dashboard, you'll see I have app discovery and control. So in this demo, for example, I discovered 422 discovered cloud apps and utilized in the infrastructure. So whether that is you know, a P2P, whether that is a gaming, whether that is um, a cloud app from a social media or app discovery, um, whether that is cloud storage, talked about Dropbox or Box.com, people being remote right now. How, how are you protecting your, your organization's assets? They're not already VPN in or required to VPN in to access your infrastructure. You have something, say, in your O365 or in a cloud. How are you able to see what's going on at your current endpoints? And if you do not have visibility currently, that that's a major security flaw and something that you should look in and want to address from a security, cybersecurity infrastructure standpoint to be, you know, protect against malicious activity. I can also keep drilling down from security requests. I can get as granular as by destination, by identity, by type. I can see what against my URLs. You know, if there was a, for example, I have a workstation one and an identity here for Jack London. This user user has security instance. I can go ahead and look at their specific requests. You can also analyze and approve blocked requests from Cisco Umbrella. So if you have someone that is a C-level exec, or maybe an IT, or maybe marketing, for example, and they need access to be able to go to YouTube, and that's not allowed in your infrastructure, you'll be able to go ahead and modify your policies for your remote users. No longer do they need to come in the office. You know, going into a live firewall 
at one location and then modifying it over and over for every branch location. You can do everything from a single pane of glass. So as I pivot back over here, I'm going to go through some tabs from a deployment perspective. So under deployments, you'll see we have core identities. What's required to stand up Cisco Umbrella if you don't have it? Well, there's a couple things that are required. Number one, it's to po point your DNS at a Cisco Umbrella instance. So your organization will get an org ID, and then you would point your, your corporate DNS to Cisco Umbrella. If I have somebody that's going to be remote, uh, we can load two different options. I can have an Umbrella, uh, it's known as a roaming computer. I can have an umbrella roaming client installed on the machine, or if they're running Cisco AnyConnect for VPN, if that's already installed, you can actually add a module directly on to the AnyConnect in order to maintain and push firewall and web security policies directly to the machine. So in order to do that very quickly, I would come up here to the roaming client. I would click download, and there's two different options. So I have my download Windows client. I also have one for Mac OS. What is this giving me? This is giving me my protection level from all layers of umbrella. So whether you have DNS essentials, whether you have DNS advantage, whether you have SIG essentials, you're going to be able to push policies and protect your corporate assets very quickly. You can go ahead and download this Windows client or the Mac client. Or as I said, what you can also do is download a module profile for any Connect 4.x. In your infrastructure, if you have a ton of ASAs or a few of Meraki's or a few of firepower threat defense devices, this is the best practice if they're already running the AnyConnect. You can go ahead and add the module profile directly on there. So there's three different options for protecting your corporate assets remotely from here. Very quick, very easy, and you can they can be deployed by any corporate um, push, whether that's GPO, whether it's SCCM, um, whether that is any third party actual pushing software for deployments to the endpoints. Uh, we can push that directly to there. Now, I'm not going to go too much deep and in dive in this, but your Cisco umbrella and core identities allows you to also protect Chromebooks and mobile devices. From a Roman computer, we're really going to focus on Windows and Mac because they're a majority of corporate assets, and, and then we're just going to move forward. The next thing that was introduced that if you have, for example, in uh, your current umbrella, so you're running umbrella DNS essentials, and you are looking and saying, Michael, I don't have this network tunnels. Well, that is part of SIG Essentials. So what is the network tunnel? Well, a network tunnel is you're creating a tunnel ID to a, for example, we'll use a branch office here. At this point, a branch office, I could use a router, I could use a, a, a legacy firewall, I could use multiple different things. But let's, if I focus on a router, for example, if I want to build a tunnel, um, from my remote office. Say I don't have a firewall. Maybe I have an end of life, end of sale firewall at that office. And you know what? There's not many users there. The world's changed. Everybody's working remote. If I want to maintain a single pane of glass to build out network tunnel configurations, build out firewall policies, web filtering policies, I can quickly add a new tunnel right here. So very simple. We can do this as test tunnel. And I'll choose my device type. And there's multiple different devices. You know, I was mentioning earlier, ASA, FTDs, ISRs. So if I chose an ISR right here, all right, I can go ahead. It's going to ask me some basic questions. You know, what are some valid uh, IP ranges um, or addresses that are there? So if I needed to do anything, I could just add a generic one here. And it's going to very simply, I'll show you, create my tunnel for me here. After I come down here, I'm going to just choose basic tunnel information. One of the main requirements you'll need is a tunnel ID. This is how you're going to identify an umbrella that's going to accept the unique set of credentials to talk to it. This is what you're going to do here is you're going to fill this in. We'll just call it test tunnel. And we'll do a passphrase standard Cisco one. And then when you're done this, you would click save and it's going to automatically create you another tunnel. So just like this tunnel, here for an example, since it's a demo, I'm not going to update it. You'll then have actual traffic routes. It's going to also spit out a config for your tunnel of what needs to go on that remote device. So for example, in this one, I would then look at the config, review the config, and apply that to my ISR. That ISR would then send all of my DNS or my firewall rule set traffics for this tunnel to my Cisco umbrella integration. The other thing that we can do in Cisco Umbrella from a core identity is you can pre-provision people from Active Directory for web policies and then match SAML integrations. 
um, from an enforcement time. So maybe from here, we can build policies where maybe our remote users are restricted from blocking and looking at social media. Maybe we don't want them looking at certain um, third-party shopping sites during the corporate business hours. With Cisco Umbrella, we also are able to integrate this into your web policies and push that remotely to your remote users. So as we continue down, I wanna go ahead and get into some meat and potatoes of the actual Umbrella dashboard right now. So in order to accomplish Cisco's DNS or firewall or web security policies, they're in, they introduced what is known as policies, right? So from a DNS level, creations of a DNS policy is done here. What is a DNS policy? A policy is gonna give you control of log levels and block pages, and what are we able to stop? So a DNS level can work on multiple things. It can do URLs, it can do IP addresses, and it can also do categorization, for example, social media, or maybe some other third-party non-wanted sites, maybe um, geographic-based locations. Say I don't want someone browsing to uh, a geographic location where my organization doesn't have um, actual business. Very good way for malware to get infected in your organizations, malicious sites from third party and other add-ons that send you to rogue um, nation corporate states. We don't want to have that control. With DNS policies and the Cisco umbrella roaming client, we can quickly maintain and manage that. One of the nicest things that I really like in this DNS thing is right here, they have a policy tester. So if I build a policy, I don't need to go on a user's computer and test something. I can quickly choose an identity and go ahead and, and I could test something like facebook.com um, or google.com or shopping, for example. Um, I can go ahead and test this right here. I can run a test right here. Right? Now, I, I don't have any valid users listed in here, but I can run my test right here without giving any impact to a user. The goal behind the Cisco umbrella is to allow you to do your job, manage, maintain, and secure your infrastructure without having to log into multiple different firewalls, without having to impact your users. Driving down a little farther, if we go in here, we'll see I have a tab now called firewall policy. So firewall policy, what am I doing here? Well, this is where I'm actually going ahead and doing any kind of intrusion IPS systems, so any intrusion protection systems, any kind of network threats. So this firewall policy is where you would build a layer three, four policy configuration that you may have had that what our ISR is talking to. So you have a router remote site. That's now going to look directly here, and your firewall policy can be single pane of glass managed. If I wanted to add one, for example, same thing. I go right here on the right-hand side. I go ahead, and I fill out my new firewall rules. Now, firewall rules in Umbrella are very similar. Their position qualifies top-down. Uh, they're applied sequentially. So when the default rules at the bottom, that'll be the last one. But if I wanted to open up something very quickly, say I wanted to open up TCP and I wanted to open up any application and I want to tell it a tunnel uh, for that one site location, I can quickly do this directly right here from Umbrella and push it in minutes. I'm not going in, I'm not SSHing into that single pane of glass firewall. I'm not making the changes four, five, six locations. Everything's done from a pane of glass. Web policies. So the web policies are essentially a bunch of variable underlying rules that allow the security to protect and control your organization's internet destinations, right? So that can be, um, you know, geographic locations like I was referring to earlier. That could be rule sets for, you know, um, categories, hours of when people can browse certain things. Maybe there's certain days those a week where you have remote users, they, they can do whatever they want on the weekends on their computers. If I want to build out a web policy, I'm going to be able to dive directly down into here and build this out. It's nice with Umbrella. I can quickly also make a custom block page that shows, please contact my organization's help desk. For example, please contact Aspire's help desk uh, for this page, page to be unblocked or if you think that this was categorized incorrectly. So Umbrella really gives us the, the transferability from you know, the standard Meraki, the standard ISRs, the standard ASAs, to be able to do this all at a cloud infrastructure without any impact on premises to your organization. Umbrella also integrates with PAC files. So if you're doing any kind of proxy production organization, you have PAC file options for being able to deploy that in your infrastructure. 
So the last thing that I kind of want to go through real quick is data loss prevention policies. So one thing that everyone seems seems to be uh, struggling with is trying to maintain what and what's access and data is being utilized in a, a cloud type infrastructure. So let's take, for example, in a uh, box or a Dropbox scenario. How do you know right now if you do your company as says somebody downloads a, a company secret document, a secure document, and then they go ahead and it's on the laptop. And say you have a, a URL filter and at 6.30 p.m. they're allowed to browse social media or go to Dropbox. Do you, are you alerted? Do you have visibility into, is, was that uploaded to box.com? With DLP and, and inline um, data loss prevention policies, it gives me the CASB options for being able to look and analyze what's being done on the workstations. Nice thing about Umbrella, it's very small agent on a workstation. As I say, with the roaming client or the AnyConnect module, you can hide those. They're not visibly active to the endpoints of the user. So you're able to go ahead and proactively monitor and maintain your data loss prevention, your firewall policies, any kind of web filtering, um, web searches that are being done where maybe some, some deadlines aren't being meet, met. There is full schedule and, and flexibility in Cisco Umbrella to go through this. And then as we continue down the final up, I'll go through the rest of the dashboard. Um, the policy components. So everything in this list here for the policy components ties back into these correlations of management policies. So for example, if I wanted to build a destination list and I want to do a block list, for example, or an allow list. So say I want everyone to be able to go ahead and get to youtube.com. Maybe my organization's a marketing firm. I need to be able to talk. For that, very simple. I can add it right in here. And it's going, it tells me what it's going to do. It's going to apply to my DNS policy. And then what does that apply to? Well, that applies to my remote workstations. So very quickly, I can add, modify things on the fly. Going to the days where I need to go modify five, six firewalls. I need to get on a user's workstation, update uh, the file, or, or look at their their proxy configurations. Umbrella has a lot of different features and integration with that. I think the last thing that I mentioned, um, and I want to go over real quick, is Secure X integration. So I mentioned to you uh, earlier in their presentation that um, Secure X, so Secure X is Cisco's um, single pane of glass solution. If you have Cisco AMP, if you have Cisco Umbrella Insights, um, if you have Cisco ICE, a variety of Cisco's platforms, you, you can gain access to Cisco Secure X. If we wanted to go ahead and generate an API key, which is what's required for Secure X to talk to, we would come down here into the administration. We would then go into API keys, and from here we can go ahead and create additional keys. So for example, from a legacy network device, what I would have here is my key. I would then provide this key token to my SecureX dashboard on the other API, API side, and then I would be able to do a direct comparison integration. So what does that give me? Well, it gives me all reporting that I can set up from Umbrella is going to go ahead and be sent to my SecureX. That'll give me a single pane of glass integration uh, to see everything. I want to see AMP. I want to see Umbrella. I want to see a, a holistic overview of my environment. This is what the API keys and the SecureX integration in Umbrella will give you. So I'd like to thank everyone for your time today and joining me for this demo. Please use the Q&A feature at the bottom right of your screen for any questions you may have for our speakers. And presenters, please remember to unmute your microphones. Thank you. Hi, Mike. This is Pam. Thank you uh, for a very insightful presentation on Umbrella SIG and for a comprehensive demo of the dashboard. We have a few questions here from the audience. Um, let me go to here. Uh, can, here's a question. Can I deploy Cisco SIG from, from a site with only a single router? Yes, so you can deploy Cisco SIG from any iOS-based um, Cisco device router and build a direct network tunnel to your company's corporate umbrella dashboard. That's great. Um, here's another question. I have, I'm, I'm worried about remote devices. Can I see all the remote devices in a single pane of glass when using Umbrella? 
Yeah, so Umbrella, like I demoed in the demonstration and showed you guys earlier, Umbrella has the visibility uh, to look at two different options. Um, if they're both going to fall under roaming clients, so whether someone's home, remote, Starbucks, even at a remote satellite office, the roaming clients functions and functionalities will give you visibility to everyone's machines and what their functions are remotely without you having to remotely access that device. That's awesome. Um, here's another question. Can I do troubleshootings? Can I troubleshoot SIG tunnels from the dashboard? Yeah, so just like uh, in any industry, um, in any network related protocol, IPsec, anything like that, I recommend you have access to both ends of the tunnel, but from the umbrella dashboard, you will be able to debug and troubleshoot any kind of network tunnel configurations issues. If you have a phase one or phase two failure, you will be able to see logs and be able to troubleshoot that or make configuration changes on the umbrella side of the tunnel. Thank you, Mike. Um, here's the last one. How, how is, can you tell us how the subscription structure is looking like and is the license for user, for device and how easy is it to deploy? So the, uh, that's a kind of, a couple uh, different questions. So, number one, um, the subscription is different a little bit for the version of Umbrella. I would recommend um, contacting myself and, and Aspire, and, and I can go through details with that. But um, in the legacy version and the, the lower baseline version of Umbrella DNS, um, for example, Essentials, is done by a user base. So, um, you're not counting endpoints, so you do it based on user count. When you get into the higher level version and network tunnel interfaces of SIG uh, essentials and SIG advantages, that's done by IP um, count. So it's kind of a complex question. Um, that's something I could definitely provide more information to, but it's done with a hybrid of user and IP structure. Uh, from a ease of deployment, um, Aspire, myself, uh, we can offer a POV um, very quickly, very easy for you. We can set it up within 30 minutes for you to be able to immediately see detailed integrations of what's going on your infrastructure. Um, as you go down the more advanced feature sets, the, this complexity gets a little more detailed when you start talking about SIG and uh, doing any kind of DLP or CASB features. But to get the baseline of Umbrella and for, Umbra for Aspire and myself to set you up, it's very simple and it's very easy to set up. Thank you, Mike. Let me check sure. if there are other questions here coming in. Oh, that's, that's all I have. Thank you very much. You're welcome.